welcome to this week's vlog. So this week's vlog is a guest vlog. In continuing the focus on different models of physical education, I've decided to ask two people who are developing a model and experts in this area to deliver the information. So the focus is around health and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for inviting us as guests on your physical education and sport vlog. My name is Mark Bowler. And my name is Paul Salmon. Our purpose in this vlog is to share with you some of our work on developing a pedagogical model for health-based physical education. As such, we will now focus on three distinct areas. Firstly, we will provide a background to the landscape of health within physical education. Secondly, we will justify why a model for health-based physical education could be beneficial. And thirdly, we will explain how the model might look in practice. So firstly, the background of health in physical education. Physical education has long been recognised as a key resource for promoting physical activity in young people. However, the profession has struggled in this role due to its multiple aspirations and competing agendas such as developing sports performers and fostering social skills. Furthermore, research highlights limited opportunities both within initial teacher training and continuing professional development for teachers to engage in physical activity promotion and behaviour change strategies. This has resulted in many teachers having a narrow understanding of health within physical education with a predominance of fitness testing, sport and performance practices. This is particularly worrying when physical inactivity has been highlighted by the World Health Organization as the fourth leading risk factor in premature death. In addition, data from the Health Survey of England in 2012 tells us that young people are not getting enough physical activity with only 21% of boys and 17% of girls aged 5 to 15 meeting the UK guidelines for physical activity of at least one hour moderate to vigorous physical activity each day. With some of the concerns just mentioned, we need to argue why. Why do we need a pedagogical model for health-based physical education? We argue that health-based physical education, which has valuing a physically active life as its major theme, could be used as an important tool to promote physically literate young people. There's currently no other pedagogical model for health-based physical education which has physical activity promotion as its major theme. In addition, we feel the focus on both how to teach health as well as what to teach in health could provide really useful support for teachers and encourage them to be successful in promoting physically active young people. For an in-depth overview of the rationale for the pedagogical model, we encourage you to read the Lane Harines et al article at the bottom of the page. The major theory for the model draws on self-determination theory. In self-determination theory, the promotion of intrinsic motivation can be achieved by teachers using a range of needs-supportive teaching behaviours. There are three of these behaviours. These will meet the student's needs for autonomy, competence and relatedness. Autonomy support will involve the teacher providing choice, options and decision-making opportunities for the young people. Providing competence support will allow the young people to feel that they are making progress and perceive their own competence in the activity they're taking part in. And thirdly, relatedness. That will allow young people to feel safe in the environment that they're participating in and it will involve them interacting very positively with the, their peers and with the teacher. The learning domains in health-based physical education. We argue that the effective domain should take priority when teaching and that will be ably supported by the cognitive, physical and social domains where appropriate. For teaching health-based PE, it's really important to understand the key assumptions for teaching and learning. There are five of these. Firstly, teachers should understand that teaching can result in motivated young people who value and demonstrate sustained physical activity. Secondly, changes in physical activity behaviour require sustained periods of learning in multiple learning domains. Thirdly, what's learned in health-based PE must be transferred beyond the lesson. Fourth, long-term participation in physical activity is facilitated, as we just heard, by feelings of interest, enjoyment and satisfaction, i.e. intrinsic motivation. Finally, number five, physical activity promotion is best supported by multiple school, family and community strategies. There are four goals of health-based physical education. Firstly, an habitual mover will lead an active lifestyle through regular participation in physical activity. Secondly, a motivated mover 
will demonstrate a positive attitude and perceived competence in their chosen physical activities through high levels of effort and individual challenge. Thirdly, there are informed movers. These individuals will explain how and where to engage in interested physical activity, the effects of an active lifestyle and how to participate safely and effectively to achieve their personal goals. And finally, we have critical movers. These learners will evaluate barriers to physical activity involvement and become activists or movement promoters to positively, positively affect both their own and others' physical activity environment. So finally, how might health-based physical education look in practice? Well, what it will look like in practice will be addressed in the next vlog. But hopefully this vlog has given you some ideas about how to address health in PE and would welcome some critical discussion and some debates around health and physical education. Look forward to seeing you in the next vlog.